Paul. Well, guys, nice to see you. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Hi. Good afternoon. So, last time we discussed how to um, calculate effective um, capacitance of batteries of capacitors connected in series and parallel. Today, we will continue uh, dealing with um, capacitors uh, in terms of calculating uh, energy which is accumulated inside capacitors. And uh, also we will start a new topic. Uh, in particular, we will um, start discussion of electric current when we deal with uh, motion of uh, electric charges, which create some flow and uh, obviously that causes some electric charge transfer in space, um, which is called electric uh, current. So that is our plan for today's discussion. Let me switch to the slides. <clears throat> hmm. One second, somehow this pen doesn't work properly. Okay, so, okay, now it works. So <clears throat> if we uh, charge our capacitor, one plate with negative, another with positive electric charge, then it will accumulate some um, energy because of repelling, like, like interaction between this, uh, charges which are accumulated on uh, our uh, capacitors plates. So uh, if it accumulates some energy, in particular, we can specify uh, accumulates energy in the form of electric field inside capacitor. That means that we can uh, also talk about some work which is required in order to charge this uh, capacitor. So if we have some potential difference, delta, delta V between the plates of the capacitor, then uh, we want to add DQ uh, to this uh, capacitor, like small uh, charge, then work necessary to do this will be equal to potential difference times uh, this small uh, electric charge, DQ. Um, potential difference we can represent also in another form. Um, that will be equal to some charge Q divided by capacitance times dq. So <clears throat> uh, this is um, equation which gives us the there is already some electric charge accumulated in this in, in this capacity. Uh, oops. 
Do you still hear me, guys? It tells that again that internet connection is not good. Yeah, we hear you. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, so again, want to highlight that this Q here in numerator is a uh, charge which is uh, already accumulated in the capacitor prior our efforts to add additional small charge dq. And this charge q defines a potential difference which already exists between the plates of the capacitor. So in this case, total work which has to be done in order to charge capacitor from zero to some charge q will be integral in this range from zero to q divided by C, Q divided by C times DQ. Uh, capacitance. Um, will capacitance depend on amount of electric charge which we uh, accumulate inside a capacitor? Any ideas? So we were talking about the fact that electric capacitance does not depend on electric charge, which is accumulated in a capacitor and is defined only by geometric features of the capacitor. So in this case, we can easily uh, take out this capacitance um, from the integral, because it is just a constant which does not depend on electric charge. So we have Q times D Q here. And if we integrate, we eventually will get total charge in square divided by 2C. So this is the equation which defines work. Um, necessary to charge electric uh, capacitor. And assuming that uh, we don't have any losses, this work which has to be done is um, also the amount of energy um, which is uh, accumulated inside this capacitor uh, in the form of electric field. So, Taking this into account and this final equation, which we got for uh, work and also internal energy, um, let us uh, try to write it in different uh, forms. So it is possible to focus on amount of electric charge accumulated in the capacitor. However, we can also represent it in different ways. So. Uh, let's say this internal energy accumulated inside the capacitor is uh, Q squared divided by 2C. Uh, we remember that uh, uh, capacitance is given as electric charge divided by potential difference. So instead of uh, C, we can put Q divided by delta V. Eventually, we get here. 1 over 2 u times delta v. So now we can uh, uh, represent uh, accumulated energy inside the capacitor in terms of two parameters, electric charge and um, the potential difference. And also, um, we remember that total electric charge from here, we can show it is equal to capacitance times potential difference. So if we uh, now substitute instead of Q this expression, we will get one half C 
times delta V square. Uh, actually, these first and the third equations are quite uh, commonly uh, used because it relates internal accumulated energy of a capacitor with um, total charge and potential difference um, with capacitance as some coefficient. <clears throat> so now uh, let us consider some uh, most general case of a parallel plate capacitor. And uh, um, uh, in case of parallel plate capacitor, we have constant um, electric field, as we discussed earlier. So electric field is constant. So that's why we can write that potential difference between plates of a parallel plate capacitor will be equal to electric field times um, distance between these plates. <clears throat> um, in its turn, capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is equal to epsilon naught times A area of the capacitor divided by D. We also derived this equation previously. So now if we, uh, for instance, mm, substitute these values in the last third uh, equation, then for internal energy uh, accumulated inside a parallel plate capacitor, we will get one half uh, instead of, uh, so here, instead of C, we put epsilon naught times A divided by D. Instead of delta uh, V square, we put E square times D square. And that will be uh, one half of, uh, so we cancel this and this. So it will be epsilon naught A <clears throat> times D and multiply E square. So that is uh, expression in terms of uh, electric field magnitude inside of uh, parallel plate capacitor for its accumulated um, potential energy. Uh, if we want um, to dis determine uh, specific energy per, per unit volume accumulated in uh, parallel plate capacitor, um, then we can divide this expression uh, by volume inside the capacitor, and that is area times uh, thickness. So that will give us like distance between the plates. Um, so um, with that, we can uh, write that, uh, let me go to another slide, um, specific energy per unit volume will be total energy accumulated in the parallel plate capacitor divided by the volume where this electric field is uh, located. And that is area of the plates uh, times mm, uh, distance between them. And that will be equal to one half uh, epsilon naught. Um, okay, we can write all equation here for total energy then divided by AD. So we can cancel out these guys. And eventually we have one half epsilon naught times E squared. So we see that uh, there is quite a simple relationship between the amount of energy per unit volume, uh, which is which consists in electric field, like in um, per unit volume of space where electric field is uh, created, 
uh, with the magnitude of this electric field. Uh, so it's proportional to uh, second power of magnitude of electric field. We will come back to this um, equations later when we discuss some electromagnetic um, waves like in intensity of um, light and electromagnetic waves. But this is our first um, step towards uh, finding the uh, energy of electric field uh, per unit time, uh, per unit volume. Sorry. So now one more thing we need to um, discuss before we make a transition to um, electric current is uh, capacitors with dielectrics. So we know that until now we considered only uh, so-called let's let's call them empty uh, capacitors. In this particular case, it's parallel plate capacitor. So it means inside we don't have anything; it's just vacuum. That's why um, uh, let's call it capacitance of such a capacitor C naught, and uh, so it's charged with some charge U naught. And uh, there is some potential difference delta V naught between these plates when we have just vacuum in between two plates. Um, if we place now some dielectric material, <clears throat> uh, do you still remember definition of dielectric material? Can you remind me what it is? Epsilon zero. Can you repeat, please? Epsilon zero. Uh, no, it cannot be. You mean epsilon zero is uh, permittivity of free spaces, fundamental constant. I am um, asking about some properties of a dielectric material. So it means that it doesn't conduct electricity, it doesn't have. Um, mobile charges, which can move in external electric field. And uh, it's so-called band gap, the energy gap between valence and conduction bands um, is larger than three electron volts. So at room temperature, uh, we cannot create free charge carriers there. <clears throat> so um, if we place some dielectric, inside uh, this volume of a parallel plate capacitor, then mm, amount of charge which is accumulated in this capacitor, this will remain the same, it will be Q0, because we didn't uh, add or took away any charge from this capacitor. However, the uh, this capacitance and the potential difference between plates will change. So the question is how it will change. Uh, one of the uh, property of any dielectric material is so-called um, dielectric constant. We mark it K, and that tells us in how many times electric field inside this dielectric material will be smaller than electric field outside this material. So if we place this material inside the external electric field, then um, it will reduce because of some polarization effects, um, it will reduce um, this electric external electric field inside its volume uh, by uh, this factor k, which is called the electric constant. So that means if we in k times reduce um, electric field and we feel kind of all volume between plates, we can write that new potential difference between. Uh, these plates of the capacitor 
will be equal to initial potential difference divided by this number. So if we reduced in k times electric field, and we know that potential difference between dv naught is equal to e naught times d. Uh, so if we reduce e naught in k times, means that we also reduce potential difference, and that will be initial potential difference dv naught divided by k. So for all the electric materials, uh, this k is larger than unit. So we have uh, for air, very close to unity, but still larger. So uh, because if we put any material in vacuum, it has some um, interaction with external electric field. And as a result, um, inside this uh, material, we reduce uh, electric field. Uh, so assuming that we don't have any uh, um, signetoelectric materials, which can uh, be uh, predominantly polarized in external electric field and enhance it. But those are special kind of materials. If we're talking about uh, just uh, majority of normal dielectrics, their electric constant is always larger than unity. So uh, now let us calculate how capacitance will change. Means what will be value of this new capacitance? Because if we keep electric charge the same and potential difference uh, changes, then uh, capacitance also should change. So capacitance will be equal to U naught divided by delta V. So initial charge and this new potential difference. Uh, that could be represented as initial charge divided by initial potential difference divided by the electric constant K. From here, Let's just equal. We can write that it will be k times q naught divided by delta v naught. And uh, this guy is nothing else as initial capacitance. So that is c naught. So here we will get k times c naught. So uh, we see that by placing some dielectric material inside a, an empty paraplate capacitor or any other shape capacitor. Uh, we will uh, re uh, increase capacitance of such a capacitor um, by this factor K, which is the electric constant of um, our um, dielectric material, which we uh, use for this purpose. So that is one of the principles how um, tunable capacitors are uh, working. For instance, they are shown in electric circuits uh, by this sign with some arrow, means that we can tune, like change intentionally capacitance. So uh, for instance, if you assume that we have a parallel plate capacitor and some block, some plate of the electric material, which can go in and out between these uh, plates, uh, that will cause change of the capacitance. Um, and uh, that can be uh, very useful for uh, tuning some electric circuits and uh, uh, radio uh, signals receivers, um, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so that we should keep in mind that the electric matters and eventually we can write for a uh, parallel plate capacitor, which is completely uh, filled by the electric material. Um, capacitance is equal 
to k, the electric constant, divided by epsilon naught times a, and divide by uh, d distance. So means here we have just capacitance of an empty parallel plate capacitor when we have vacuum inside. And um, if we put some dielectric, so we need to take this into account, uh, putting uh, this uh, uh, dielectric constant into equation. Okay, so now we can proceed uh, further and uh, uh, try to introduce electric current. So, as I mentioned before, electric current is a directional flow of electric charges and that uh, plays a huge role in uh, any electrical circuit because all of them are designed in order to transport electric charges uh, between different uh, devices. And uh, obviously there should be some reason. Uh, and so first should be a reason, second should be a special condition uh, um, in uh, uh, order to realize such electric uh, current. Please, what if the capacitors are increased? Air has the electric. So, we have a question about uh, placing water between plates of a capacitor. And uh, the question is specifically about if it will cause increase in the capacitance uh, because the electric constant of water is 78 and uh, air has something close to one. Um, well, yes, it will. However, you need to keep in mind one factor. If you just get some tap water and feel the volume of a capacitor, um, then you will not get any capacitor because it will be shorted. Um, this tap water or like drinking water uh, consists like contains a lot of uh, diluted salts. Uh, those are uh, when they are like salts diluted in water, they uh, become positively and negatively charged ions. And uh, if we place them in uh, electric field, those uh, charges can move, so they actually can create an electric current in uh, this volume of water, and uh, that will just work as a conductor, which will connect two capacitors, uh, two plates of the capacitor, and discharge them. So uh, we will not be able to have a uh, working capacitor. In order to um, have water inside the capacitor and still make it work, we need to use uh, distilled and deionized water, so which is uh, extremely clean from any um, uh, impurities, uh, salts, and plus deionized means that we have really low concentration of ions and very high resistance of water. Such water is used um, in uh, research purposes, uh, and uh, for instance, in this block C4. Um, of Nazarbayev University, there are many labs which have uh, tabs with this deionized water uh, for different making different solutions uh, under controllable conditions. That water is highly resistive, and you can use it as a dielectric material in uh, side capacitors, but not regular tab water. So coming back to <clears throat> electric current. So in order to have some charge transport, first of all, we need to have mobile charges 
which can move in some environment. Let's say we have some positive charges and this is some cross section with area A. Um, and there is should be some, some force which will uh, cause their motion, the like directional motion, um, and that should be electric field uh, inside this uh, medium with mobile electric charge. Then they start to move and create eventually some electric current. <clears throat> so definition of electric current is the rate at which uh, charges uh, like at which charge in general charge is flowing through the uh, surface or the cross section of a wire. Uh, so we can write that average current is equal to some total charge Q, which goes through the cross section of the wire per unit time. If we are talking about some uh, current which depends on time, so not necessarily that it's constant uh, current, um, then we deal with so-called instantaneous uh, value of current, and that is um, d u over dt. We take first derivative of um, electric uh, charge change over time, um, means how fast uh, electric charge is moving through the cross section of the wire at very short interval of time. So units for electric current, I, they are, we can see them already from this definition of electric current, that is Coulomb divided by second. And um, there is a special unit introduced specifically for current, and that is ampere. Uh, so we use A. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, ampere, uh, it is uh, electric current at which uh, through the cross section of a wire, um, one coulomb of electric charge is transferred per one second. So <clears throat> uh, let us consider some microscopic model of electric current and uh, define some uh, main uh, characteristics which should be taken into account. So let us consider some wire with uh, cross section area, let's call it A. Uh, we have some positive charges. Let's assume positive charges. In general, in metal wires, we have transport of negative charges, electrons. But since um, by definition, direction of electric current coincides with direction of positive charges, so for convenience, we consider here uh, positive charges. Uh, so they move in this wire and uh, uh, in some, so they move with some speed VD. Uh, and within some time interval delta T, so we have VD times delta T. Uh, that will be the displacement of charges along this wire. So this displacement will be delta x. So the total charge which uh, moves in the uh, wire 
within these two cross sections at a distance delta x uh, will be defined as follows. That will be uh, like this total charge u the delta q is equal to n means concentration of charge carriers, the amount of charge carriers per unit volume times uh, actually volume. And this volume is area of the cross section times displacement delta x. So that will be total amount of uh, charges which uh, <clears throat> are defined in this volume uh, A times delta x, displacement of uh, this current of these uh, uh, charges um, during time interval delta t. So if we consider um, that charges move with uh, some so-called drift speed, Vd, um, and pick up some time interval uh, that is displacement delta S is equal to Vd times delta T, then we can substitute instead of delta X, this expression in terms of Vd and delta T for total charge. And we get delta U equal to N times A times VD times delta uh, T. And uh, uh, actually, I uh, forgot here one term. Um, so this N times a times delta x gives us the total number of charges, but not the total charge. In order to get total charge, we need to multiply it by unit uh, charge uh, of um, charge of electron uh, by magnitude, because we consider positive. not the total amount of charges defined in this uh, volume, uh, which is a cross section uh, of the wire A times uh, displacement Vd times delta T. Now, according to definition of electric current, we need to uh, do the following. So electric current is equal to total change of electric charge uh, divided by this time interval. And that is equal to N times U times V D times A. So uh, what is important for uh, us is that uh, electric current in some wire is defined by concentration of charge carriers. The more charge carriers we have, which can move in this wire, the better it is. And uh, also, um, it is defined by uh, speed, drift speed, at which these um, charges are moving. That parameter will depend on the strength of electric field, like potential difference between terminals, edges of this conductor, and also will depend on the properties of the material because that will also define how fast charges can move in this or that material. Another important uh, parameter is current density. So this is just current, uh, which flows through whole cross section. Uh, however, very often it is convenient to operate with current density and that is denoted as J is equal to I divided by area. So it's current per unit area, current density J. And in that case, it will be Q times N times VD. So indeed, it will be independent from 
cross section of the wire and will be defined only by these two parameters which we discussed concentration of charge carriers and their drift speed uh, which means that uh, actually both uh, concentration of charge carriers in the conductor uh, will also depend on uh, materials pro material properties um, also temperature if it's some semiconductor material um, and uh, uh, drift velocity will depend on uh, potential difference between terminals of the conductor, like magnitude of electric field, and also properties of the material, how um, easy charge carriers can move through this material, because one material can be uh, more favorable for charge transport, another less. Uh, so these are the most important concepts of um, electric current, which we introduced into this discussion. And uh, uh, defined just electric current as a uh, rate at which electric charge is um, transferred per unit time through some uh, cross section of a electric wire. Uh, what is important to remember that because of continuity of electric current, um, no matter if we have constant cross section uh, for uh, a conductor, or we have conductor with some uh, variable cross section uh, area. Um, doesn't matter, the, the electric current will be the same at any uh, cross section of uh, these conductors. So this is so-called uh, continuity uh, of uh, electric current. Uh, obviously, electric current density section, so that's why this value uh, will be different, but uh, electric current will remain constant and will not change uh, if there are no other uh, branches of electric circuit uh, where this uh, current can flow. So if there is just only electric wire, no matter what, at any uh, cross section of this uh, wire, electric current will be the same. So with this, I would like to um, finish for today. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome. So we uh, introduced the, uh, uh, first we calculated uh, electric energy accumulated in a parallel plate capacitor. Um, we derived a equa general equation and then applied um, it specifically for parallel plate capacitor, determined um, the relationship between uh, electric energy per unit uh, volume with electric uh, magnitude of electric field. So it's proportional to E squared. Um, also highlighted that capacitance uh, of a parallel plate capacitor, which is filled with some dielectric, with dielectric constant K, will increase with respect to uh, its initial value by this factor K. Um, that is because the magnitude of electric field will be reduced and proportionally to this reduction will be reduced potential difference between plates of the capacitor. Uh, and uh, uh, also we introduced electric current, defined what it is, um, how uh, it is related with uh, microscopical uh, properties of uh, the conductor, specifically um, concentration of charge carriers, mobile charge carriers, which can participate in charge transport, and also um, uh, drift speed, which is another property of 
um, two, two main factors, property of the material, of the conductor, and also uh, property uh, of um, the magnitude of electric field inside this, inside this conductor. So um, what is uh, important so uh, to highlight, we talked previously about conductors and the electrostatic uh, uh, equilibrium condition. And we made the statement that inside a conductor, there is no electric field. And that is true for this particular case of electrostatic equilibrium. However, um, if we have charge transfer means there should be some electric force acting on these mobile charges, which push them along the uh, conducting wire. And that means that this conductor is not anymore in electrostatic equilibrium. And we do have internal electric field um, inside um, conductor, which actually moves these charges and uh, provides this uh, drift speed um, for them in some one, one direction which is defined by the direction of this internal electric field. So we obviously will continue with um, electric current. And in particular, we will discuss um, and introduce concept of um, electric resistance and electrical conductivity. Uh, that will be during our next uh, discussion on Monday. So until then, I wish you good weekend, have a rest and uh, uh, take care. Hopefully, everything will be uh, fine. Uh, we will meet on Monday and continue our educational process. Thank you for the lecture. Thank you. Okay, Thank guys. You. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good evening. Bye bye.